guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoilery gush for The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. As I said, this video will have spoilers, so if you haven't read this book, go ahead and check out my spoiler free review, which will be linked on the screen. So as I said in my review, I end up loving this story. I just love these stories that are based on Russian or Eastern European mythology. I need more of them. Between Uprooted and Deathless and now this, it's just my thing. I like how dark they are. I like how mysterious and just kind of borderline sinister some of it feels. Like it's not this happy story at all necessarily and everything kind of like comes with a price and even the little like household spirits and stuff or like the creatures can turn against you. I just like it. I just like it a lot. So I love the atmosphere and just the feeling that you get when reading these kinds of books. So I love this. I ended up taking my dog out for a walk right after I was getting to the parts about like the vampires, which I forget what they're called in here, but like basically the vampires. And I was like, wow, I'm gonna die out here. I'm gonna die. Like I can, I could hear things scuttling in the woods next to my parents' house. It was like, 20 below zero with a nice wind chill, it was bad. And I was like, wow, I guess this book is super atmospheric because I feel like I'm there. So I loved Vasa as a character. I just love these kinds of like wild women. She reminded me in a lot of ways of Agnieszka from Abruited, but com not completely the same at all. Just having this like, she's one with the forest. She's one with those kind of like mythological beings. She understands, she knows there's give and take, and she loves them. And just the fact that she's like keeping them alive during this time when her like stepmother, who's horrible, but you empathize with? sort of, who's horrible, but like in killing them and, and no one is listening to her. And it's just like, oh my God, can't you see that ever since this woman came and the priest came and everything is falling apart and you're blaming her as a witch woman. Cause she's been here a while and everything was fine before. Like that was the only part, like during that little middle part of the book where like bad things keep happening. I was like, why? I love her. Don't let anything bad happen. These little creatures are like dying and help them. And I also really enjoy just like the number of antagonists. Like I said earlier with her stepmother, you hate her and you're so annoyed by her and she's so awful, but she also thinks she's crazy and she's seeing all these things and she doesn't really believe in them and she thinks she's crazy. So like, of course she's gonna be terrified and acting this kind of way. And then you even have like Constantine who is also awful and has like this like Frollo-esque element to him, but there's also like brief moments where you feel bad for him. And he sort of is in love with her and it's not quite as in creepy of a way as like Frollo, but like almost, and it's like, uh, ugh. like I really enjoy these very complex character-driven relationships where you're like, these people are awful, but there's glimpses where you're like, they're so human and I can I can understand why they're being awful like this. Like, I, I get it. I understand. These Russian folktales for me, who's like very not used to them and really only getting them through fiction, they're so intricate and it makes me, every time I read one of these stories, like go and try to like research more about these different myths and like how the original stories were and all this stuff. Like, I just really love that. So as far as like her and the like Frost Demon de Morosco or whatever, like I, loved that. The whole death in the maiden element, you guys know how I feel about these kinds of relationships and this kind of thing and this like dark and twistiness. Again, this kind of sits in the middle. I mentioned this in my review. It's not quite uprooted and it's not quite the level of twistiness that is like deathless, but it's like right in the middle where there's like a little bit of both of that and it just made me very happy. I just liked that element, that little twinge that we got of like is there gonna be a romance between her and him later? Like, it's like a 2% little, maybe, you know? I'm very excited for that. I just like that connection, I like the connection that she has to this, like, all this folklore and how independent she is. She's like, I will not be contained, I will not be controlled. And I just, I just love that. And she just keeps fighting and I just adore her. And I also really like the different members of her family. Like I said in my review, everybody feels like real people. They all feel like they're existing out there in the world outside of the story. They don't feel two dimensional. They all have their own motives. Her father is a generally good person, but makes a lot of mistakes along the way. And I'm interested to see more of her siblings, which I know that we'll see the siblings that left in the next book in the series. So I'm very excited about that. And just this political element too, at the beginning, like all this stuff happened because of this whole political element. So there's that political thing going on as well. And I'm very intrigued about that. So there's a lot of things with the series that this just built a nice foundation for. And I'm very excited. And just this like, you know, this the bear 
and chaos and all this stuff. Like I just really liked it and the imagery is just so lush and beautiful and eccentric and odd and like I said sinister. Like it's just, mmm, I just love it. It's it just, it feels like a cozy read. I'm putting this off obviously like all year because it came out last January and I'm putting it off and I wanted to read it when it was cold outside and that was a good idea because this just felt super super cozy so I would like to say that I'm going to get the second book in the series soon but you guys know how I am and I don't currently own it and I don't know if I'm going to buy it because I have a lot of books on my shelf but I want to and I can see myself doing it because this these kind of books they just speak to me man so comment down below, let me know what you thought of The Bear and the Nightingale, and if you have any other recommendations that are like this besides Uprooted and Deathless, let me know, because this is like so my thing now, and these are my favorite kinds of books, so comment down below and let me know. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!